Hi everyone, welcome back to Game Maker Cast. It's Mickey, and in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the plugin called Scribble. Scribble allows us to display text and sprite fonts very easy and quickly. We can also use this to show some really nice text effects in our games. Some of the benefits and feature of Scribble are inline color swapping, inline sprites, text wrapping, and typewriter effects, and that's just to name a few. So let's roll the introduction and let's take a closer look. So I'll have the link in the description, but basically we're going to be going to GitHub to grab this plugin or extension here. This isn't listed on the marketplace, so we'll have to download it through GitHub. What we want to do is go to the releases and we want to grab whatever the latest release is. And at the time of this recording, you can see it's 703. So we'll come down here and we'll grab this YYMPS file. So let's download that and switch over to our project. Because we didn't grab this through the marketplace, we'll have to come up to the tools menu and say import local package. The next thing we'll do is locate the file that we downloaded and just say open. You can see here, it will show you the package and all of the resources that will be included. I'm just gonna say add all, and then you can go ahead and you can just import. So now that everything is imported, we should have a new folder here called Scribble, and you can see it comes with everything that we just saw. When using Scribble, we should set it up at the beginning of our game, and then we don't need to worry about adding fonts afterwards. So let's take a look at how we can use a regular font first before we switch over to the spray fonts. I'm gonna go ahead and create a brand new font in my game. And for the font selection, I'm going to try and find a nice one here. And I'll use Oswald and just I'll leave everything else the same. Now, the one thing I want to do is I want to right click on here and go open and explore. You can see that we have a test.yy and then a PNG file. I want to make sure I hit the regenerate button and then bring this up one more time in my explorer. You should notice that your font is now inside a directory. And how Scribble works is it needs this YY file in the working directory. So what that means is we can copy this. We'll come up here and to say included files and then open and explore. I'll just copy and paste that YY file in there. This means that any changes that I make to my font file, I'll have to make sure I regenerate and then copy and paste it inside my data file. That's just one thing to remember when working with fonts. Now that we have our font in there, let's close this and I'm gonna open up my object and go to the object initialize. In here, this is where I wanna initialize Scribble itself. What I want to do is I want to add that font that I just copied into my working directory. So I can use scribble font add. And if I bring this up, you can see at the bottom here, it takes the font name, which is going to be this FNT test here. Because we copied it into our included files, we don't need to have anything in this path. So I can go ahead and I can end this. The other way we can do this is by using scribble font add all. And what that will do is it will scan our fonts directory or look for any fonts that may be in our game. This means that if you have a font in this directory and you don't have it in your included files, you're gonna run into an error. So make sure that that's something to look out for. I'll just remove this and keep it as the current font itself. Now, the other neat thing about Scribble is we can tell this particular font to be the default font. So if I have other fonts in my game, it's not gonna mess anything up. I can do that by just saying Scribble font set default and then passing the font name in here. All right, so now that Scribble's set up, let's actually make a title. We're gonna open up our object title here, and you can see that I have a create and a draw event. Let's just go to the draw event, and I'll maximize this. I'm gonna tell Scribble itself to draw something, such as my cool title, and then I can chain on an event, and this is where I want to actually draw it. So this is an X position and a Y position. So I'm gonna draw in the middle of my room, so room width and room height divided by two. I'm gonna make sure that I put this object in my room, and now if I hit F5, we should have some text being drawn on our screen. Perfect, looks horrible, but let's keep using the power of Scribble to make this look better. If we come back here, let's center everything so we can use FA center and FA middle. Now let's run it again, and our title should be perfectly aligned in the center of the screen. All right, so this is looking better. Let's actually make this a bit bigger. Now, what you would probably do is come in here and change the font size, but with Scribble, we actually don't have to. Inside the title and the draw event, we can easily add a scale function and let's scale it by three, meaning that this is gonna be upscaled by three. So you can see that now we have a bigger title. All right, let's bring in a little bit of color here. Let's change the cool to a blue color and then we will reset that color to keep everything else white. You can see that Scribble supports the hex number here and the hex value that I've chose will make it a nice blue. There's a bunch of different color values that you can have in here, but I'll just keep using hex as that's what I'm used to. 
One of the last things I want to do with my title is I want to bring it to life. There's a couple effects that we can use, and for this cool effect, let's give it a wave pattern here. So all I have to do is supply the wave command, and anything within the wave is going to be applied to that effect. So if I hit F5 and I run my game, you can see that now the cool is moving up and down. Okay, so far we've done some basic text things, but Scribble also allows us to use sprites in line. So you can see here, if I go down to my sprites, I have this star sprite. So how we would do this in Game Maker is I would determine the width and the height of my uh, of my text here, and then I would have to figure out the X and Y coordinates and draw the sprite there. Well, I don't have to do that anymore with Scribble. All I have to do is tell it the actual use that sprite. So in a square brackets, I can say I want to use the sprite star and the frame zero. So I'm just going to copy that and I'm going to go to the end and I'm going to paste it in after title. Now, if I hit F5, I should have all those effects and you should see that now we have a star here and a star here. The reason that this one is a little bit bigger is because we have to reset everything to default. So I could either use a slash or I could just say I don't want to scale anymore. So I'll just scale by one. If I run my game again, we should have what we have for the two stars. Now, the neat thing is we have this cool moving up and down, and these effects can also be applied to the sprites itself. So let's put a wave effect. Actually, let's put a pulse effect on our star. So I'll copy that command and paste it in. And if I hit F5, we should see our star pulsing up and down. All right, so this is pretty cool. But what if we don't want to use a font or our artist has given us a font file? So you can see if I edit this image, you can see I have a whole bunch of different frames in here and they are going to be different characters, numbers, and whatever is in here. But we can actually use this inside Scribble as well. Let's open up our initialize and let's go to the create event. We'll maximize this because this might be a little bit big. So we currently are adding the font itself, but we want to also add the sprite. So we could say scribble on add. And then what we want is from sprite. So in here, it takes the font name, which is going to be whatever our sprite is called. And then the next parameter is the map string. And I'm going to copy and paste this in. So you can see that this actually is going to match up with whatever is inside our sprite. So on frame zero, I have a apostrophe, or sorry, an exclamation mark. And on the very end, I think that's a Z. Yep, so that's a Z character. So that will match up exactly with what we have here. The next parameter that we have is the separation. So how many pixels do you want in between? And I'm going to say zero, and then the space of a, sorry, the width of a space, and I'm gonna make that eight pixels. Now these two are optional parameters, so I'll leave the last one off. Now, unlike fonts, the Scribble program is not gonna automatically detect any fonts that we have in our sprites, so you have to include it every single time you want to add a new font. So just keep that in mind. So now we have two fonts here, and we have our default set to font test. So let's use this particular font, and let's set the word cool to use that font. So in here, all we have to do is say use that font and we're gonna mess things up, but so resetting everything, all we need to do is say a slash and I'm gonna put in my scale again. I know this is getting a little bit wonky, but we have my and a blue cool and then underneath, we're gonna reset our scale. So if I hit F5, hopefully this will work. We have, <laughs> you can see that we have my and then we have the letter C and a bunch of question marks. So the question marks mean that my, spy, my sprite file only has uppercase. So I want to make sure that I use uppercase instead of lowercase. So now you can see that I am mixing my fonts and I can't spell the word cool, but it is what it is. So the next thing I want to look at is the actual typewriter effect. So if I get rid of everything and I want to go to my main room and drag in my object typewriter, and I'm just going to get rid of the title because we're done working with that. Inside the typewriter, we have a crate and a draw and a step event, and they're all currently empty. So the way that Scribble works with typewriter is it needs a Scribble element in order to do its work. So Scribble element gets created, it gets put into the cache, and then the typewriter just basically goes from left to right and reveals the characters. You don't have to worry about any of this. I know it sounds really confusing, but just bear with me. So what we want to do is we want to make a variable called element. And once again, I'm just going to use Scribble and I'm going to say, hey, Hello, how are you today? Now to get the typewriter effect, we're gonna chain onto the scribble here and we're gonna say typewriter in, we're gonna pass it two values here. So this is gonna be the speed at which the 
position moves from left to right, and then how fast we can see those characters. Now, the only thing we wanna do is draw this particular element. So in our draw event, we'll say element.draw and draw at the 10, 10 location, which is X and Y. You can see that, hello, how are you today? And that is currently working. So just like before, we can use all of the effects. So let's actually try one. I'll just copy and paste that in. So if we hit F5, you can see them scaling and shaking the word U. So you can see that that is currently working with all the effects. And also one of the things that Typewriter allows us to do is it also allows us to pause or delay some things. So let's actually delay this by two seconds. So we'll just say delay, pass in how many milliseconds we want. Game will run and you can see it will say, hello, how are? It'll wait two seconds and then carry on. Now, what if we wanted to wait for the user to actually press a key? So let's actually copy and paste what we have here. And you can see that we're changing our line again to say, can you guess what today is? And then we have a pause event. Then we'll just say, yeah, I cannot either. Now, if I run this particular game here, you can see it will stop. And no matter what I press, I'm hammering on the keyboard, you can probably hear it. The program is not gonna continue. We're gonna to have to tell it to actually continue. So in the step event, we're gonna write a simple logic statement here. We're gonna say with this current element, if the current element is paused, then we're gonna to check to see if we press the space key. And if we've pressed the space key, then all we wanna do is unpause the particular element. We should see a pause after the question mark. And as soon as I hit that space key, you can see that it gets unpaused and it finishes. Now, some of the other neat things we can do, if we go back to the create event, I'm gonna copy in a really long line here. So you can see that this line is extremely long. And if I were to run this, it's just gonna go off the screen. So you can see a wonderful serenity, yada, 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 and it will go off the screen. So what happens if we wanna wrap this? Well, that's built into Scribble. All we have to do is say dot wrap, and then we give it the length that we wanna wrap it at. So I wanna wrap it at the room width minus 20. So if I hit F5, with that little bit of code, it's gonna automatically wrap. So once it gets roughly here, it's gonna come down to the next line. How amazing is that? Okay, so this is still going. It's an extremely long text. So what happens if we wanted to write something that allows the user to press the space key and skip this dialogue and take us to the very end? Well, we can just go in the step event and let's actually add it at the top. What we wanna do is we wanna check the type writer state for this particular element. So if the state is less than one, which means that we are not finished with displaying the characters, then we'll come inside here. We'll check to see if we press the space key. And if we've pressed the space key, then we want to turn off the typewriter and that will automatically show us all our text. So let's try this. Actually, before I try it, I wanna make sure I write typewriter. Okay, so if I hit F5, and this long text is gonna start and I hit my space key, you can see that automatically the dialogue is completely finished. So I hope you can see the power of this package and I cannot recommend it enough. Again, the download and all the links will be put in the description below. The final thing I wanna show you and I won't actually go over it is if I go into my uh, room here and I delete my typewriter, I'm just gonna add my dialogue here. This is using pretty much everything that we talked about. If I hit F5, you can see that we have the sprite font, we have the cool effects, and the other thing is I also have a portrait based on who is talking. So right now it's waiting for me to press the space key. And if I hit the space key again, you can see it automatically finishes that dial. We also have those effects and we also given our text some, a little bit of life here. So this guy is worried about his look. He's really worried about his hair, even though he has them. So, I mean, this thing is really cool and you can easily create these systems with a couple lines of code. So anyway, thank you for watching. A special thank you to everyone who has decided to support this channel through Patreon. And a special shout out to the following supporters in no particular order. Robert, Andrea, Ashby, Paul, Darth Wolf, Annie, Victor, Jujube84, Edward, Ian, and Vil. Thank you everyone once again. And if you really like this video and would like to see more, please share this channel with your friends.